This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on June the 15th, 2015. Enjoy! On this edition of Computer Club Lesson, it's question and answer time. We have uh, some questions from the audience, uh, from the club, and we have uh, a question or two uh, that I received an email. Um, questions about transferring uh, the um, emails that I give the club with the links for our YouTube videos. Uh, how to do that, what's the best way to do it. Uh, we're uh, going to uh, dive into Windows Live Mail exporting and importing and uh, I have a few words about malware bytes and where you can get the program. All that and more, your questions on this edition of Computer Club Lesson. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our um, last session, um, and we're going to take a break over the summer. And so I've just, just dedicated this uh, program to questions and answers. Um, the first, before we get into your questions here, I got a question uh, in email the other day uh, after I sent the link out to tell you this is what we're going to do. And uh, the question was um, to transfer all of the past lessons um, from YouTube to a documents folder. Okay, how are we going to do that? How, how are we going to do that? All right, first off, if you're using Windows Live Mail, okay, um, essentially, what you can do is you can find um, the emails that I've sent you with the links for the uh, lessons on YouTube. And what you can do is you can essentially just grab the email that I sent you. Um, Let's see here. Um, okay, here's one new club video. Okay, um, that's the one you want to save in a in a documents folder. You don't want to lose the email, so you want to save it in a documents folder. You'd simply click on it, hold down your hold down your left mouse button, and drag it to your documents folder, and it makes a copy. Well, I did that with uh, drafts. I did it all in drafts. But how did you split your screen so that yeah, you how Okay, let me uh, let me do this again. Okay. So essentially what I did was was I opened up the mail program and here it is full screen. Okay. So you want to you want to click on here at the top left um, top right. or top right, I'm sorry. Um, the center icon there and that that will bring or it should bring the the win the window mm -hmm. to a place where you can um, <coughs> edit the size of the window simply by grabbing the edge, oh, okay. okay, and moving it around. All right. Now all I did here was I just moved it out of the way a little bit because I know where I'm going with this. By the edge. Yeah. Touch yeah. The top blue yeah. Bar down here. Touch the top of the blue bar. Yeah. Hold your mouse down and drag it over. Yeah. Then I opened up my folder and or, or my uh, my owner's folder you can open up any folder you want or even make a new one mm -hmm. and then you go back to your go back to your <coughs> mail pane would you go to my documents well you can put it in any folder you want in my documents you put it on your desktop anywhere you want okay yes yeah well that's that's what i did i just clicked on the on the the documents folder, or the owner's folder, and it opened up, and I can click on uh, my documents right here, 
okay? I can make a folder inside of that if I want. I can call it anything I want. But just for the purposes of demonstration of how to save this mail, um, you would then um, go back to the mail package, come on, and um, grab a hold of the email with your left mouse button and just simply drag it to the folder that you want. And there it is. Okay? So I could do that with graphs. You can do that with anything. Yeah, okay. How would you back that up? Because it's everything in folders I lost. I just happened to leave them in email. That's why I still have them. Yeah. So how would I back that up? Then I can delete them out of email. Um, I would not delete them out of email, uh, Brenda, because you're on cloud, cloud email. You can make a folder yeah. in Outlook.com called old email. And just drag everything into that, rather than delete it and it's gone. Yeah. Okay. The thing about uh, cloud email, cloud folders, is you have plenty of room for everything. Okay. So nothing ever goes away. You can save all of it forever. And <coughs> essentially, that's what I do with Gmail. Well, who's all on cloud? Am I on cloud? <coughs> if you're using Outlook.com yeah. or if you're losing, using Gmail. That, that's a cloud email service, okay? okay? Uh, I can show you here on mine. Um, I just uh, open up Google, click on Gmail, and it will load my mail from Gmail. And it's everything is there. I've made folder after folder after folder so to save stuff. Well, you can if you want to. You can do it that way. If you're if you're using uh, Windows Live Mail, okay, that means that your mail is local to the desktop. It's, it's, it might be on the cloud if you're on Gmail or Outlook.com, but if you're also using Windows Live Mail, it means that your mail is local to the desktop. It's, it's on the cloud, but it's also local here. So that you can, you can do this trick of saving the, the emails locally to your computer. If it's on the cloud, if it's Outlook.com or, or, uh, or Gmail or Yahoo, whatever you're using, just go into the mail package on the cloud and make a folder and call it lessons and then you can move those lessons over to that folder. Mine is Windows Live, but I'm still Outlook.com. Yes, you, if, you, you, if you want to log into Outlook.com, all of your mail will still be there that will be on Outlook.com. If you make a folder in Windows Live, um, it will turn up on the web page, Outlook.com. Okay, the, the, two, the two packages are synchronized. All right, so whatever you do in one, you're doing in the other. But to, uh, to save these lessons um, from email, to save the links, you can do it those two ways, okay? Now, um, I'm just gonna close out of this for a second. And the other way that you can do this is that you can subscribe to my channel where all of the videos are. If you have a Google account you can subscribe to the channel and I'll show you how it's done. We'll start up Firefox here because yeah yeah you can use you can use it that way. Now uh, this is Firefox and I'm not uh, I'm not logged into my Google accounts on Firefox so I'm just simply going to uh, where are we here should be able to show me YouTube uh, YouTube go and I can log into I can go to YouTube or however you want to do this and I can search uh, I'm I'm probably going to get them all in a search but I'm going to get at least one okay so computer club lesson and I tell 
Oop, it didn't go in. Computer. Club. Lesson. Okay. And I'll tell it to search. Now it's brought up in search our computer club lessons. Okay. But uh, they may not all be there. Because remember, these this is uh, just uh, Google searching for the searching for in U, in YouTube something called Computer Club Lesson. Um, the latest lesson is in there. If you if you scroll down, you can see it June the eighth. But you can click on any one of them. Okay, so let's just take the first one. Now it's going to load the lesson, and I've stopped it here to bring it uh, so that I can show you. Uh, that there is a subscribe button on here somewhere. Subscribe. Oh well, it's I'm doing that in in uh, Firefox. I knew it. I know that it works in Opera, so we'll try that. But there is a there will be a subscribe button on the page that if you just simply subscribe, it will ask you to log into your Google account, and then you you have to click on subscribe. Here we go. Well, what the channel will be, um, where the lessons are, okay? Subscribe. So you're subscribing. There's the subscribe button right there. So you're subscribing to my YouTube channel where all of the videos reside as soon as I make them. As soon as I publish them, they're on my, uh, my channel here. If I click on subscribe and you're, not, um, and you're not logged in to your Google account, it will ask you to log in. Um, and then um, you can just keep going back to uh, YouTube. Uh, when you want to see the new video, just log into YouTube, and um, it will sh it will show you what channels you are subscribed to. Click on that channel, and there's the latest video. It's simple enough. Uh, it might be a little complicated at first, but if you follow through with trying to get subscribed to my channel, that's where all of the videos will reside. Is there other stuff on that channel? There's a couple of little puppy videos that I've done for a client. <laughs> um, now the. You know it's your channel. Oh, it's it, it will say so. Um, let me just go back here. What's your Google account? Your email address? Yeah, your Gmail address and your and your password. Okay, so you know you've got me because um, there's my my picture, my name, and a subscribe button. Once you have subscribed, that button will be grayed out. Okay? It will be grayed out telling you that you have subscribed. Um, now, I can show you in Chrome because I have subscribed to uh, my brother's YouTube channel. may take a minute or two for this to come up in Chrome, but I've subscribed to my brother's YouTube channel. So when I look at all of my stuff on YouTube, what I'm doing, uh, there will be a, a subscription channel for uh, my brother. Uh, here we go. 
Okay. And it says it says up here my subscription. I'm logged in as me. Okay. Up here my subscriptions. I don't know why it's slowing down, but it is. By Gordon Sherrill. Okay. That's my brother. So there's all of the videos that he's put up. That's way cool. I think that's way cool. I've never used Google. Well, I think I put Chrome on your computer, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I recommend Google Chrome uh, for two reasons. First off, it's a more secure browser than Internet Explorer. It doesn't have the features of Internet Explorer that can be exploited by somebody. So those exploits are not available in Chrome. The other thing that the Chrome browser will do is, as you saw here, it plays videos without Adobe Flash. Okay, so Adobe Flash is problematic in that it can be exploited. You can click on a Flash video or a Flash video will load in your browser when you go to a website and those Flash videos can be exploited. But in Google Chrome, they are not playing with um, Adobe's Flash, um, Flash program. They are playing in what's called HTML5, which is a whole different animal than Flash. And that's why I, those are the two reasons I recommend that you start using Chrome. Now, once, you, once you've uh, gotten Google services, just simply by getting an account and a password, please remember it, um, there are all kinds of other things that you can have with your Google account. And one of the best things that you can have is Google Drive. Drive? Yeah. You can put things up, important things up there um, for storage, where if something happens to your computer, um, yes, fine. In Brenda's case, something happened to her computer, but if she had stuff on a cloud hard drive service, which is what Google Drive is, uh, all she had to do would log back into Google and her stuff would be there. It doesn't have to reside locally on your computer, which can be damaged and your stuff goes away. So she could call it up on any other computer? Yes, any, from anywhere in the world. Just log into your Google account and your stuff is there. Okay, so if I don't use MSN as my home page? Yes, uh, yeah, well, uh, as far as Google Drive goes, or um, uh, MSN has uh, OneDrive, okay, which is like um, Google Drive. It's, it's called OneDrive. It's, it's a cloud service where you can store stuff onto. Uh, the, the best thing that you could do was, would be to make a little text document. Hi, I'm a text document. Save it as .txt. Okay? And then start playing with it. Try to upload it to the drive. Understand how it works. Once you've got it uploaded to the drive, try and download it. <laughs> Understand how it works. Okay? It's relatively simple. It's, uh, sometimes it's just a matter of to, to download the file. Uh, you would simply uh, move your browser out of the way, grab the file from the list that's on the drive, and just drag it over to your desktop and it'll download. The same thing with uploading it. In a lot of these services, it's just a simple drag and drop. Drag it from your desktop to the, to the uh, web page, and it uploads. It's that simple. Is that what uh, LibreOffice is uh, LibreOffice is, uh, is an office suite that allows you to, without having the Microsoft product installed, see everything that was created by a Microsoft program a dot doc, an Excel spreadsheet, or a presentation, LibreOffice will open it. So if someone makes, uh, emails you um, a PowerPoint presentation, 
that you click on it and you can see the pretty pictures and the music and stuff in, in the presentation. LibreOffice will open it. You don't have to have Microsoft Office. Okay? LibreOffice, Microsoft Office, you pay for it. Do you delete it, Microsoft Office if it's the, a trial of the same computer? You can. Libron? Yeah, you can. You can, you can, if you want to save the space or you just don't want it being in the way, you can, you can delete the shortcuts. Um, the, the program will remain ready to launch if you, if you want to buy it. Or you can go into um, programs and features, excuse me, and delete it from there. Um, okay, so there's, there's lots of good things that you can get from Google services. Um, the one thing that um, I like about Google services is Google Maps. If you use um, MSN, they will want you to use Galaxy Maps. So you go to Galaxy Maps and it downloads Crapola on your computer. That's why I don't like Galaxy Maps. I prefer to use Google Maps. Uh, they may be uh, tracking what you're looking up, but who gives a darn? Okay, who gives a darn? It's a great map. It has great features, and um, and it will even show you a street view of your house. If you set Chrome as your default, will it be in the sandbox? Yes. If you're using sand Sandboxy yep. and you change your default browser to Chrome, then when you launch when you launch Sandboxy, it will launch Chrome. Okay. But you have to make it default. I didn't reload Avast, but I opened Windows Defender. Yeah, Windows Defender is, is that Windows 10, uh, when Windows 10 will have Windows Defender as the default um, as the default antivirus. Yeah. Um, it's as good as any, Brenda. Just keep using it. Okay, it it. Um, it comes on Windows 7, 8, 8, 1, and will come on 10. Just keep using it. It's, it's, the reason that uh, I particularly like Windows Defender as your antivirus is it gets out of the way. Some of the ones that you download and uh, from the major vendors um, are big, bulky packages. When you load them, they dive right down into the kernel processes of your computer grab it by the throat and will not let it go. So if you want to do something while it's running a scan, it's whatever you want to do is going to be pretty slow because the antivirus will not let go of that computer till it's done. When, yeah, Norton, uh, ESET, uh, McAfee, all of the ones you pay for, um, they won't let go until they're done what they want to do. They won't get out of the way. Windows Defender can divine that you want to create a document. Okay, I will just throttle back on what I'm doing. And you go ahead and you don't see a performance hit on opening a program because Windows Defender gets out of the way. Is Windows Defender better than Avast? It's on, on a par with them. Uh, Windows Def um, Avast, Windows Defender, um, AVG, all use pretty much the same um, definitions for viruses. When they download an update, they are essentially downloading an update of the definitions of what a virus is. And as if something comes at you, uh, Windows Defender or any of them looks at the first dozen lines of code in the thing that's coming at you and says, okay, by definition, if it does this, this, and this, and it has this line of code in it, it's a virus. Stop it. And I've got AVG on it. Yeah, AVG so does the same. Stop Windows Defender from working? Yes, it will. If you are using a third party antivirus, um, Windows says to itself, okay, you want to use this, good luck to you. I will shut Windows Defender off. You can turn it on, though. 
if you uh, if you unload you can turn it on again if you unload the third party antivirus that you have the windows will only run likes to run only one antivirus at a time okay because there are so many conflicts if you have two of them going so if if um, you're using a vast or avg it will just shut windows defender off until you uninstall the program and then Windows Defender will turn back on again on your next, your next turn boot up. Back on on its own. Yeah. So you might as well get rid of that. Yes, you might as well. Does Windows okay, Defender uh, update itself? Yes, uh, Windows Defender updates itself from Microsoft whenever it needs an update. How do you download it then? Uh, you don't. You don't. If you're using Windows um, Windows Vista or Windows 7 um, I, I believe some of the latest updates of Windows 7 install Windows Defender on your on your system without you even knowing about it. It's there. Can you find it? Yes, uh, you can find it by by going to your control panel, and you're going to go to. If you have Windows Defender, you will see it as an entry in your control panel. Okay. Now, um, if you click on it and bring it up, in my case, for this computer, I have turned off updating altogether. I don't want the updates to get in the way of what I'm trying to show you here. So I've turned them off altogether. But if you tell it check for updates, it will just simply update Windows Defender and start working. You have to uninstall any other third-party antivirus that you might have. If you've paid for one, if you've paid for Norton, if you've paid for McAfee, oh my God! <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're at almost at the end of your subscription, you've got two or three, four months left on it. Unload it. It's not doing you any favors. Yeah, uh, it takes care. It takes care of the major portion of it. Um, uh, if it doesn't want to um, unload, uninstall properly, uh, especially Norton, there is a tool that you can get from uh, Semantic from the Norton website that will go through your computer and completely unload it. Um, there are other tools that you can use to do that. Yeah, I've been through all that. Yeah. That's good, but that's how that works. Okay, um, one other thing that I wanted to cover before we get to uh, questions, uh, we'll have a half an hour for questions, is Malwarebytes. Um, just before I came here, because is a couple of times people have asked me about what Malwarebytes, and I don't have it installed on this PC, I decided to install it. And this is what I did. I went to malware bytes and I wanted to get it from major geeks I've told you before that I like going to major geeks uh, because their sites are usually clean major geek, geeks? yeah majorgeeks.com so I put in the search term malware bytes major geeks and it's going to do a quick search and here it comes Download Malwarebytes Anti-Malware 2.6 Final from MajorGeeks.com. So I clicked on it. And we wait for it to decide to, to uh, download. And in a second or two, it should show you something that I don't like anymore. It showed me this. Okay. That's from Google. No, I mean, who does it mean? It means the malware. It means that Google has looked at the malware bytes, uh, or the I'm sorry, the Major Geeks website for this and at this particular page for the download for malware bytes, and it found something it did not like. 
So it stops you right in your tracks to say, this is a bad idea, folks. Don't continue any further. On some browsers, it will give you the option of continuing, but when you see something like this in your Chrome browser or in your Internet Explorer browser, stop what you're doing because if it gives you the option to continue, bad things can happen. Disaster. We even talked if about you trust the site? Even if you trust the site, because um, what um, Chrome is looking at, and Google in particular as a search engine, is is there something on that web page that might give you a problem? And so it throws up this red, this red page, this red flag, to say, yeah, you continue on, you've got a problem. Don't do that. So that was on Well, that was for, that was for getting the uh, Malwarebytes program from Major Geeks. And I, I've said many times that you can go to Major Geeks and get stuff, and usually without a problem. Usually without a problem. But in this case, if you want to get, so I ran into that, and I said, okay, I better not go there. Let's go to the Malwarebytes download site. And there we go. Malwarebytes free anti-malware internet security from www.malwarebytes.org. Okay, which is its website. So I, I went to the website, made the free download, and everything is hunky-dory. Good, because that's where I went to put it in. Yeah. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. And I've said this before, if you're going to go to websites to get programs, go to the website um, that has the code for the program. VLC. Go to vlc.org. Okay, if you do a search for VLC and you see it coming up uh, from other websites, um, like download CNET.com has a copy of Malwarebytes, okay, don't go to, to CNET to get the stuff, go to Malwarebytes webpage to get it from the original source. Whatever that red page saw though, wasn't it still there to go to their site? Um, that may that yeah that now in that case that may uh, be uh, Chrome giving you a false positive okay but major geeks will look at their website someone will complain they'll look at that web page and see is there something wrong with it if not they will re-index the page and that will go away you'll be able to get the stuff from there. Can you roll that back up again? Malwarebytes.org. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that uh, is covering the the major things that I wanted to talk about. Um, let's uh, do a couple of questions, and then I will qu quickly again run through Windows Live Mail how to import and export. So, questions. I'm still looking how to download the option for ten. I looked and I said, I asked how, Google how to get 10, and it yeah. said I needed an update KB3035583. Okay. Uh, no, I, I uh, they tried to download K, that. No, you, you can't no, download these separately. Yeah, okay. Um, well, that's my question. How, yeah. how do I get it? <laughs> uh, you're going to have to be patient. Um, you're going to have to be patient. Um, when we go to the Windows Update page, if you have your updates coming in, you can have a look and you can view your update history. It's right here in the list, View Update History. Okay. If you click on that, it, it, should, uh, it will give you a list, a list of the updates, KB, yeah. long, long, long. Well, it's going to be a recent one, within the last month or so. Yeah. 
Right. Okay. So you can look for that number there. Yeah. If it is there, um, from there I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's not there. It's not, not. If it's not there, you're just going to have to wait for it. It eventually it will come. Eventually it will come. I know when I look, there's a lot of con a lot of conversation about it's yeah. a bad website. It's uh, yeah, it's it causes problems and yeah, don't go there. And yeah, um, if you're going to if um, I have looked around for single updates yeah. for my computers and for client computers, uh, I just want a single one to take care of one little problem. Um, I can't get them to download as a single update. Neither can I get that. Yeah, um, a lot of times uh, these these updates are synchronized with other updates that you must have. So all I can say, Ron, is just wait. Just wait. Yeah. Just wait. Yeah. Um, if it I know my if it got an earlier version of uh, yeah. premium and it's up on her card. Yeah. And it's not on mine. So yeah. Okay, so um, that's what we can talk about for the Windows 10. I know you're waiting for it, but wait for me to give you the word. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Yeah. What happens if I don't have that flag when it's time? Um, we'll have to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to pay for it. I deserve it. <laughs> no, no. You're, you're not going to pay for it. It will be free. Y yes? Updates. Should they do them all manually or automatically? It's recommended that you do them automatically. Really? Yeah. Once you get a lot of junk, you don't need them. No, not really. Um, oh, what okay. updates will do is um, oh. updates when, when you start it up and say, and say um, load updates. The first thing it does before it downloads any updates is it looks at your computer to see what you have in the way of hardware. There are hash files in there that tell it what kind of hardware you have. There are hash files that tell it uh, what kind of Microsoft products you have. And it looks at all of that and says, okay, um, I have seven updates, but two of them are not for you because you don't have this product or you have this conflict with this product. So you only see five. Okay, you only see five. Or they may come in as optionals. Um, you can ignore optionals if they become critical later on. They will come in as a critical update. Some, someone had a question over here. And two things that I said I can't find. One is, I think it hibernates. And last week you were saying it shouldn't, but I've got a screensaver on it, but it goes off in 30 minutes. And if I don't, yeah, that's that's the computer going to sleep. Yeah, it goes to sleep and all the lights are flashing, but then a half hour after that, yeah. it dies. No, it, it goes to sleep. Excuse me. It oh. go, it's going to sleep. So it's turning off the screensaver and going into that low power mode. Um, yeah, I'll just quickly look at, at the control panel here once again. And uh, you can try this, uh, Brenda, to see if it works. Go to your power options and control panel and you're going to click on your balanced. Um, when I have mine set to never, okay? So dim the display never, turn off the display never, um, and put the computer to sleep never when it's plugged in. I've changed those to never. Okay. Now if you have a screensaver, You've activated the screensaver from here, from a right click on your desktop to personalize. Yeah, I have yeah you have all that. Um, and uh, where are we here? Our menu ease of use. Yeah, right. screensavers. Yes. I have none. If I click on screensavers, it will bring up a panel of screensavers. Now you'll see that uh, if I put a screensaver on it, I'll, I'll choose it from the drop down box. Yeah. And then you, you can, fly, yeah, then over here, right underneath it, it says wait. Yeah, and that's wait right one minute. Okay, you can, you can change that to five hours. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, just like by uh, when you click on a screensaver, this box will ungray. It'll light up. Then you can change the uh, the time that the screen um, the screensaver will wait to come on from one minute yeah, to five now hours. I keep the screensaver on. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, it's, um, it if it's all yeah those yeah there. if it's not going to sleep, then the screensaver should um, should run until the computer goes to sleep. Yeah, well that's it, it's going to sleep and then I have Yeah, so if you go back in if you go back into the control panel power options on balanced power and tell it never to go to sleep, then the screensaver will run forever. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, you know the percentage bar that I sometimes have to change to see pictures in the email, it's not there anymore. Percentage bar. When I open my email, there used to be a thin bar at the bottom and it yeah. said 125, 175. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because some emails come, they're so huge, I had to shrink them to see them. Oh, okay. I, I understand what you're saying yeah, now. It's gone. I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you have the strangest computer. <laughs> now, this one's all here. I haven't done nothing yet. <laughs> So when you log into Outlook.com, okay, okay, and you say down at the bottom there is a. There used to be a white line, and at the very end here it says 125. I used yeah. to keep it out so as I could read it. Oh, oh, okay, all right. I see what you're saying now. Was in the right hand corner. Yeah, it was. Um, but let when me I just. Open some emails. They're so huge. I have to shrink them to see them. Yeah. And the bar's not there anymore. Okay. Let's uh, get out of that. Now, you're using uh, Internet Explorer, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and when you open it up, it looks like this, or with the MSN page. Yeah. Uh, I believe I put the menu bar back here up at the top. Yeah, there's one of them, yeah. Okay. Um, under View. Mm -hmm. yeah. Under View, there is a setting for zoom okay yeah. and I have 75% zoom on 100% will make it a little bigger 125% is what you're after Usually, yeah. yeah okay so you can go to uh, on your menu bar you can go to view zoom and click on 125% okay so that means every time I need to look at the email no once to... once you've set it yeah, but it then... should stay that way yeah it does I found that, and I keep it at 125% so as I can read it. Yeah. But then I get these pictures that I want to make small, so I have to close the email. Go to well, that, the other, all, yeah. Open the, email again. the other thing that you can use in Internet Explorer. So you have it at yeah. The bottom there. Yeah. Okay. Is the control key. Okay. So you would hold down the control key, okay. and to make it bigger, you would click plus. Click plus. Okay, hold, hold it down and just tap on plus. Okay. To make it smaller, on your keyboard. Oh, okay. On your keyboard. Oh, yeah. Okay. To make it smaller, you hold down the control key and tap the minus key. Now that's in Internet Explorer. Yeah. Okay. Oh, if, if you're looking at email in uh, Windows Live Mail or on the web. Yeah, in, in, Out, in Outlook Express. Out, uh, oh, Outlook.com. Yeah, Outlook.com. You're talking about Outlook.com, which is a web page. On Windows XP? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, it's it's an old yeah it's an old program to get the things bigger. I can't remember how so to do the it. Bar isn't on every no, no. Therein lies the problem. Uh, the a lot of times in in upgrades the toolbars change a little bit 
and then you have to get used to the change and find out how to overcome what you want to do and okay the toolbars do change in this Yeah. You can do that from your printer page. I can't find any way you know, to do it. Um, yeah, but you don't know it's going to print. I make it big, you, I make it bigger than I print it small, yeah. And then enlarge it. Hmm? Uh, when it gives you the view. Yeah, I, I know how they do it. Yeah, in uh, Windows Live Mail, there is no way to make the text bigger. Uh, but. Um, so I'm going to go on Microsoft Word and, and print something, and I make it big, and then here, I'm print it here, it's small. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you think you but if you, go on, if you go on the. Uh, forget that, go on the print. Uh, go to the print. There's a control yes. on the side, and you can adjust that. Yeah. So yeah, you can adjust. Page or yeah. Use half the page or When whatever. I go to print, yeah. well, that's all it does. It says print. Is it no, there should be a thing done. Yeah, yeah. if you. Sizes, yeah. Like six well, by seven. Yeah. Eight yeah. by eleven. Yeah. yeah. When, when, if you're hitting print yeah. from the, from a button on somewhere on your, your mail, okay, or, or from Outlook.com, if you, if you hit print, um, it will just, it's telling the printer, just print what you say. Yeah. Okay? If you have the option file print, it should bring up a dialog box of how do you want to print this? Yeah. Right. What machine do you want to use? What machine do you want to use? What printer do you want to use? And how do you want to print it? Yeah, I uh, here again. I can't see what you're seeing. Um, I'd have to come and look at it just for that. But there are solutions in uh, from the from the from the um, from the menu. Yeah, if from the menu, uh, there should be more options in there about how you print. If you do from the menu, file print. It should bring up a dialog box to say, how do you want to do this? I wish I could find it, yeah. And the other thing, every time I go you know, from, to my documents and print something, the first thing comes up, comes out is a, a bill that I had photocopied. And that comes every time now, first, before the print. <laughs> 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 That's not easy to do. I don't know how you've done that. <laughs> You must The other thing that you might investigate yeah. is you can go to your control panel and go to printers and devices. And that page will open up and it will show you the printer that you have as your default printer. It's yeah. probably the only one there. I don't have a printer on this, so I am going to right click on the default, which is uh, XPS. And what you want to click on is printer preferences, printing preferences. Okay. Now that will bring up a dialog box to tell you what the how the printer is going to print whether it's going to print a half page full page whether it will zoom in or zoom out um, whether um, uh, it will make small print bigger big print smaller uh, fit the page stuff like that okay so that's where you want to look okay. is under printer preferences by right clicking on your default printer Okay, not printer properties, printer preferences. Okay, right we got click, right click on, on, on your printer from in in printers oh. in yeah. printers and devices. Okay. Okay. Now uh, we've only got ten minutes left here, so I want to uh, go through uh, exports in Windows Live Mail. 
because uh, I'm going to use Windows Live Mail uh, because in every case the exporter's uh, function is just about always the same. Now, there is an order in which you can do this. And the first thing that you want to do is if you want to save your mail for a new computer to export it or import it into a new computer, you want to save your old mail, um, that's what you want to do is you want to uh, go to File, Export Mail, Email Messages. Now before you start this, figure out where you're going to put all this stuff. Are you going to put it on your desktop or are you going to put it in your documents folder? Um, where do you want this to go? Because this procedure requires an empty folder. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new empty folder in, um, in the My Documents folder and I'm just going to put new and I'll tell it it's for mail. Okay, so we made a new folder in mail and that pop is empty. That's the way we need to have it. So we're going to export our email messages and it the next dialogue it brings up is well how do you want to do this? In your case, in this case, it only gives you the option to export as Windows Live Mail because when you're going to import, you're going to imp be importing into another Windows Live Mail. Do not touch Microsoft Exchange. You want to click on Windows Live Mail. And you'll go next and then you'll browse for the folder Go browsing for the folder. Um, yeah, in in my documents. Somewhere. Somewhere. There it is. There's our mail folder. Okay. So we found the proper folder to put it in, and we know it's empty. Okay. So we say okay, and then click on next. The next thing it will bring up is what folders from your email do you want to save? Save all of them, just the inbox, just um, from a very specific place that you've put mail you want to keep, okay? You can uh, save all folders or you can click the radio button for selected folders and select only those folders. Once you've done that, you click on the next button and it will begin the export process. I'm not going to do it because I have tens of thousands of emails here. <laughs> it will take the rest of the afternoon. So we'll cancel out of that. And that's how, that's how you export your mail. That's the first thing you do is export your mail to that empty folder. The next thing you want to do the next most important thing you want to do is export your contacts. Okay, so if you click on all contacts, you will see that the export button lit up. Okay, now I have 122 contacts here, so I'm going to export them as a comma separated value, CSV. Okay. I don't want to, to export them as a business card. I could if I know that they're going back into Windows Live Mail, but um, it may be problematic. You always want to do this as a comma separated value. So I'm going to do that. Now it's going to tell you, uh, save the exported file. You'll give it a name, addresses and browse to where you want to save it to. Well, you've got this folder called mail that you've created and the only thing that, the only export 
that required an empty folder was your, your actual email. So you can put this in that folder. You can put this in that folder. So we will go to documents and we'll go to mail. Okay, highlight the mail. And we'll say open. And it's opened the um, it's opened the folder that we had in documents called mail. And at this point you can save and it's telling you it's going to save it as a comma separated value. All right, just confirms this is what you want to do. And it confirms how you want to save them. Just go with the defaults that are checked off. And you finish and it's now exporting your address book. So let's go and have a look. Why are you doing this? So, so that if, uh, if you're, um, first off, um, if anything ever happens to your computer, your address book may become unrecoverable. So if you've got a full address, if you've got all the addresses you think you're going to have except for maybe two or three that you'll gather up over the next year, this is a good thing to do to make that address book recoverable. All right. So now it's made addresses.csv and it is going to open, in my case, it's going to open in LibreOffice and it's going to open as a spreadsheet. Give that an OK. You do this to check that you've got everything. Okay. So if you had 122 addresses, you go down to line 122. If that's what you're expecting, that's what you're going to get. Okay, there it is right there. If you're expecting 100 addresses and you only got 20, you did something wrong. Go back and do it again. Okay. So there you go. Now that's addresses. The last thing that you want to save is the login credentials for your mail. Because as I said before, sometimes these things can be a, a little bit of a bugger to set up. I mean, the using Bell for email, um, a Bell, a dot Bell dot net email setup is really complex because of the security of it. In your cases for, for uh, um, source, they're really simple. But you want to save this anyway. So we are going to go to the export button again under file and we're going to go to our accounts. And there's my account. Gmail, Bob will you default. If you have two of them or three of them, okay, you do this separately for every one. So now your account and you want to click on it, highlight it as I've done here, and you want to export it. Okay. So you click on export. Now it's already populated a name in it. And it's going back to the last place I was in, into that mail folder, that empty mail folder that we made. And you'll see that it's given it a name, an internet account files, .iaf. Now .iaf only works in Microsoft products. Okay, you can't import a .iaf into Thunderbird Mail or Eudora Mail or anything else but a Microsoft product. But this works great for a Microsoft product. So we've decided that the name is correct unless you want to give it something else. It's decided for itself where it's going into the mail folder and we click save. You can close out of that and let's look in our mail folder and there we go, by Jeffries. There's my account settings for my email. Is that in the cloud now? 
No, it's local to my computer. You can, once you've got it done, you can put it up on the cloud. It's a great place to save it because then you can get it back. Can you do that through Google? You can do it through Google or uh, OneDrive or, or Dropbox or whatever cloud service you want to use. Okay. Now, sometimes, sometimes, uh, if you get really, really lucky, um, a dot IAF, IAF with a working email client will also save your password. So if you import back into Windows Live Mail, hope of hope, joy of joys, when it does it, it may also save your password. Not every time, but it will. Now, here's the biggest thing about importing all of this stuff back into your computer from one from the place that you're storing it if you have to re-import it back in is put these files on the desktop copy them from wherever they are and put them on your desktop and then when you go to import the import process of your account and your your contact list Windows does not like to import from a thumb drive. It doesn't like it. It will make mistakes or it won't do it. So take those files that you have stored away somewhere. For the purposes of import, you want to have those files on your desktop so you can navigate to your desktop from the import process to get them. Because as I said, I can't say this often enough, Windows does not like to import anything from a thumb drive or a cloud drive or even, um, uh, even a backup drive. Put the files on your desktop to make the import. Then they'll work. If you're trying to import from some other drive other than the main drive where your desktop is, it won't work. Okay? So there we go. Uh, there's our question and answer session for today. Can I ask one more? Okay, one more quick one. Everybody here. Source has found, made an appointment. Rogers is coming in to change all the modem from people who have source. When they unplug the modem, is it going to change, lose things or anything like no, that? No, no, no. All your stuff will, will be as it was. They will set up your new modem yeah. and make sure it's working correctly. Uh, they may even... Uh, in some cases, look at the cable that's coming into your house from the box outside and say, well, it's not good enough, let's redo that cable. You, you should get a, a performance improvement in speed from Rogers. You should get it. Because they're looking at everything. They're, they will even upgrade the cable if they have to. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go, folk. Well, before you go, Bob, we got a present for you. This year? Appreciate it. We appreciate you. Yes. Yep. And uh, we'll see you in September. Yeah. So. Now, <laughs> for, for thank you so much. Uh, James and I have had a great time doing this. Unfortunately, James is working full time now, so he doesn't get a chance. He asks me every time he's got a day off, can I come and do it? Can I get? I'm sorry, James, but you got to go to work for 2 o'clock. <laughs> Uh, so thank you very much. Now, over the summer, if, if anybody here in the room or out there uh, has any questions, please email them to me, and, if, and I'll answer your questions if, I, uh, if and when I can. And if I think the rest of the club can get something out of the question, I will make a short video in answer to it. Okay. So, okay. Um, actually, um, if you've gotten an email from me, you can capture the email address. Um, hang on a second here. Oh yeah, I know it. It's it's b o b w i l l i a at gmail.com. But if you've gotten an email from me. You can uh, capture it. B O B W I L L A. At 
W-I-L-L-I-A. Yeah. At gmail.com. So we're well, doing nothing with Windows 10 until September when we come back to class. Yes, and I will give you the word whether it's ready to go or not, whether there are problems Is or not. Is that a program you're going to buy? No, no, it's all free. Oh, well, only, not, not if you have an XP. Not if you have XP, sorry. <laughs> but, and, and Windows 10 may not run on your XP <coughs> box, it just may not have the horsepower. It's okay to reserve though, right? Yeah, you can reserve it. If, if, you, if you're getting a reservation yeah. notice, it means that your box has been looked at by Microsoft yeah. and, uh, and, it's, got a and it, it yeah. says, well, this box is ready for Windows 10. Okay. All right, so you have the horsepower. We're now on our summer break for our computer club lesson. Uh, there will be no more lessons at the clubhouse uh, until September the 15th, sometime or other. Uh, I'll be sending out an email to l let you know exactly when um, and uh, in the meantime, if you have questions for me, please email me your questions and I'll endeavor to answer them right away. If I think that the club can get something out of your question, I'll make a short video explaining what's going on. So in the meantime, have a great summer and we'll see you in September. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.